I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and I love just existing in Round Table Hold. It's got a huge table stabbed with swords, people who tolerate my existence, and a grumpy old man. What isn't there to like? But like so many other people who have played Elden Ring, I have questions about this sanctuary. Like, where the hell is it? It's in a separate location on the map, and we're never given a solid answer about why it's not a physical place. In the lands between, in the same way Landell or the Academy of Raya Lucaria is. I'm going to explain this mystery away and tell you where Round Table Hold could be, its history and its origins. If you're into Elden Ring lore, as I hope you are if you're watching this video, check out my Elden Ring lore playlist which you can find on the Eurogamer channel. Let's begin. Round Table Hold is a place where the tarnished gather, guided by grace and safe from death as absolutely no combat is allowed within Round Table Hold's walls. This is how we know it by the time we arrive in the lands between, but once it was also a gathering place of champions. Champions are basically celebrities in the lands between, with the title being bestowed to those who demonstrate phenomenal martial ability. So you'll find Radigan and Godfrey within their ranks. Round Table Hold was more than just a meeting place for champions though, with the requirements for entry being quite specific. Roderica tells us that Round Table Hold is the covert quarters of the Two Fingers, and a gathering place of champions who vie to become Elden Lord. That word covert implies that the Two Fingers resided within Round Table Hold in secret, only granting guidance to those who are permitted to enter and still issuing instructions to the Tarnished by the time we arrive. At one point in the past, to be granted access to the Hold was treated with far more pomp and ceremony, as the Cypher Blade says that long ago the Two Fingers would grant champions at Round Table Hold a coded sword with a formless cipher as its blade. The Two Fingers expected complete devotion, and should someone disobey, in ages past, that meant it was time to summon the Confessors. Confessors were the Two Fingers assassins. Confessor is also a class you can choose in Elden Ring, and it's a paladin-esque one at that. However, the Confessors whispered about in Round Table Hold were more feared than any paladin. Part spy, part assassin, Confessors are found in churches outside the lands between, dedicated to the teachings of the Two Fingers who, themselves send those confessors out to follow the guidance of grace. Often, that means they are hunting down and quietly disposing of the Two Fingers' enemies. Such is their skill and notoriety that confessors even have their own incantations. One of these is Assassin's Approach, which completely silences the footsteps of the caster, allowing the assassins to quietly eliminate Tarnished who had strayed from guidance. Krappus was the head confessor. They used a sniping black key crossbow to carry out their duties, and invented Krappus's vial, a ritual implement that eliminates all sound made by the wearer during movement. Chillingly, this vial says that there was a time when Tarnished who had strayed from guidance feared nothing more than utter silence. Thankfully, by the time our Tarnished enters the lands between, this age is long past, with the two fingers withered and decaying, lacking any confessors to carry out their will. Aside from the two fingers, there is actually a leader of Round Table Hold, and it's Gideon Ofnir the All-Knowing. He's also described as a senior member of Round Table Hold, which indicates how long he's been there. He oversaw the management of Round Table Hold and its members, and even gained true knowledge from having a long exchange with the two fingers have an enigmatically discovered that all had been broken long ago, that the Trembling Fingers, bent with age, and the Ur Tree itself were no exception. I'm 99% sure this is referring to the Shattering, but anyway, on to the other members of Round Table Hold. Dolores the Silent Hunter was one of the members of the Round Table Hold who held Gideon to account. She was an archer who dressed in the style of a man and is described as being both Gideon's critic and a close friend. Her frank friendship with Gideon would eventually cause Gideon and Saluvis's friendship, the sorcerer who serves Rani, to go their separate ways. 
One of the first tarnished to visit Roundtable Hold was Vargram the Raging Wolf, named after the White Wolf's mane upon his helm. According to old legends, wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean, those who are eligible to become gods, and Empyrean is what Vargram aspired to be. Considering Roundtable Hold was originally for those who wanted to become Elden Lord, that doesn't come as much of a surprise. Vargram was good friends with errant sorcerer Wilhelm, a silent figure by the sounds of it. Sadly, the friendship between Vargram and Wilhelm wouldn't last, and after what must have been a cataclysmic fight, Wilhelm was then imprisoned within Roundtable Hold. We don't know what they clashed on for sure, but Wilhelm is described as heretical, so it was probably a disagreement about the Golden Order. Wilhelm wasn't the only one confined to Roundtable Hold. Hugh was ordered by Marika to smith a god-felling weapon, which is such an insurmountable task that Roderica, who becomes his adopted daughter, calls it a curse. By the look of it, Hugh is an omen with horns and such growing from a skin, so he may have been given this task as punishment by Marika for simply existing as an omen. The treatment of omens in the Lands Between makes me so angry, and if you want to know more about them and get angry too, watch my Mog and Morgot Elden Ring lore video. Mad Tongue Alberic gives us a clue as to what it was actually like to be part of Roundtable Hold in its heyday. This aloof yet disturbed heretical sorcerer was said to have been driven mad by jeering tongues during his service to the Roundtable Hold, and to me, this gives me flashbacks to school and hints that Roundtable Hold was quite cliquey and its members could be very cruel. Mad Tongue Alberic will come up again later, by the way. Where on earth is Roundtable Hold then? You can only travel to Roundtable Hold by leaving the lands between, and in the map, it's a completely separate area isn't even the right word. It's as if the map knows that it's not in the same realm as the lands between. Its actual location could be inside the Erd Tree. The most compelling bit of evidence for this is that when the Erd Tree burns, so does Roundtable Hold. That would also explain why the Site of Grace in Roundtable Hold is by far the largest you find in the entire game, as the Erd Tree is the centre of all grace, and why the two fingers point straight upwards when conversing with the Greater Will. It's because the Greater Will's presence is strongest inside the Erd Tree. Wander around Landell and you'll eventually find the Fortified Manor, which is an almost exact replica of Round Table Hold. Or rather, Round Table Hold is an exact replica of the Fortified Manor. By all signs, the Greater Will created a perfect reproduction of the Fortified Manor, which was the original Round Table Hold of Champions so long ago that I mentioned right at the beginning of this video. Travel there and you'll find the physical body of the one and only Mad Tongue Alberic, who coincidentally invades you in the same location his body is found as a red spectre in Roundtable Hold if you jump down to the lowest level. Ensher, the Edgelord, also fights you after you visit the Albinoric village he raised to the ground, but while you might think you're dueling inside Roundtable Hold at first, look closer and you'll notice that it's actually a darker, sparser space that completely lacks Hugh and everyone else. Plus, you're teleported out of that space as soon as Ensher dies. To me, this signifies that you fought Ensher in the real Roundtable Hold, that being Fortified Manor. What I'm trying to say with all that is that there's obviously some kind of connection between the Fortified Manor and Roundtable Hold that goes deeper than one just being a replica of the other. Deep inside each location, there's a link, possibly divine and instigated by the Greater Will, possibly some kind of dimensional slash realm connection between the two places. Round Table Hold could be a pocket dimension similar to the one you step into to fight Renala in her second phase, with a Round Table Hold you know being affected by your actions within the Fortified Manor. Mad Tongue Alberic might have invaded you in Round Table Hold because his spirit, in a way, haunts that specific area where he died in the Fortified Manor, and that applies to the divinely connected Round Table Hold too. All of this is up for debate, of course, but both of these theories have their strong points, if you ask me. And I'm done. That's the lore and origins of Round Table Hold explained, as well as where it actually is and its tumultuous history. If you've not yet got your fill of Elden Ring lore, check out the pinned comment where you'll find my Elden Ring lore playlist. Do you have any other characters or events you're curious about and would like me to cover, apart from the obvious ones? Let me know in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now, I'm going to go and loiter in roundtable hold for some high fantasy ASMR while I draw, so I'll see you next time.